we're down to the final four. The uh, final four games. Two games on Saturday, one game on Monday. That's it. And it'll be played in the NFL Cardinal Stadium in the greater Phoenix area there. Now, there's some fallout from the events of the weekend that I thought made for some pretty compelling talk radio. A lot of noise. People are still freaking out by Purdue and their giant Bigfoot-sized player out of oh Canada. Now, if you've not been paying attention here, the debate is this guy is absolutely shredding college basketball. He's putting up redonkulous statistics, if you haven't been paying attention. Uh, maybe not. Zach Eady is his name, and Shaq like stats is his game. Except he makes his foul shots. He knows how to make foul shots. He's he's able to do it, unlike some of these other giant players over the years. And he has Purdue in the Final Four. They play NC State. So the debate is, listen, this guy's a wonderful college player. He's going to have every accolade you could possibly have. And yet you look around and most of those that pay attention to the professional game, the NBA game, say, this guy ain't it. And he was projected before the tournament to be a second-round pick, at best a second-round pick. Some of the mocks, not that the mocks are always right, but some of the mock drafts did not even have this guy being drafted into the NBA. So I bring that up because Dan Hurley, the hot-to-trot head coach at UConn, not Purdue, not Purdue, but the head coach at UConn, uh, Dan Hurley entered into the chat. I don't know if you heard what he had to say, but Dan Hurley – uh, he said if Zach Eady is not a lottery pick and a tremendous NBA player, then there's something wrong with the NBA. That's the quote that's been bouncing around. And uh, that's what we call in uh, talk radio the money quote. That is what's known as the money quote. So let us discuss the question. Is there something wrong with the NBA if Zach Eady does not end up as a lottery pick and a tremendous NBA player. Of course, what's your definition of tremendous? That's open for debate. Uh, but my thoughts on this, I've got crayons, we've got ballerina, and outlaw country. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make a two-for-one special. If you listen to the Ben Maller Show, you'll get a two-for-one special this night only. So to answer the question uh, and and for those that are a little slow, is something wrong with the NBA if Zach Eady does not end up as a lottery pick? So I'm going to go Y plus E plus S as in yes. That's my answer. I'm going yes. Uh, and, and I would argue as someone that is a captive audience that spends uh, most of my free time during basketball season watching, sampling the product, uh, I would argue that something has been wrong with the NBA for a number of years. Uh, That is beyond debate. I believe that is an open and shut case. We have direct DNA evidence to prove that as the case. Uh, There was a hostile takeover that took place, a hostile takeover by the nerds. Uh, And so that took place. Now, the analytics, which is the devil, right? The analytics is the devil in boxing, and, uh, you know, I like, I like boxing. I'm old. I guess I like boxing. Nobody likes boxing. Everyone likes the UFC these days. But I like boxing. I, I grew up with boxing. Not a big part of my life, but you know, every few months there was a big fight. And you got excited, especially during the summer. Big fights during the summer and over the holidays. It was always kind of cool. And so I always look forward to that. But in boxing parlance, right, if you look at boxing parlance, it's styles make fights. Uh, you'll get a big bruiser uh, against a technical boxer and to see who can win that. Styles make fights. In basketball, there's only one style. Everyone plays one style. That's it. That's all. It's pop a shot and then pop a shot again over and over. There are only two true outcomes in the modern NBA. It is shoot from downtown the three-point shot right three-point shot or a layup right three-point shot layup that's it no mid-range game and certainly no room no room at all for Sasquatch you cannot have a seven foot four ogre you can't have that with Zach Eady can't do it too slow antiquated outdated all of those things right 
It's like trying to compete in business without a computer and you're using a typewriter. Zach Eady is a typewriter. That's the argument the NBA people will make. Right? That outside of some kind of pity pick, we don't believe that Zach Eady will be drafted in the lottery. Now that our position is he ought to be. And I'd like to see, much like I've said about baseball over the years, and everyone tries to they have the three true outcomes in baseball, right? It's hit home run, uh, and and that's the main one, right? Everyone's trying to swing for the fences. But I would like to see a team play small ball and try to compete that way because you'd own the market in that department. In, in basketball, in the NBA, I believe it is ridiculous or maybe redonkulous, if you will, uh, that someone who sucks needs to think outside, right, and, and get some crayons and color outside the lines, if you will, here. Get those crayons and color all over the place, not just in the lines. And – We've got Zach Eady, who's a mythical lumberjack. Now, I'm not saying he's going to turn out to be a Hall of Fame player in the in the NBA, but he would provide an instant mismatch on offense. He would also be a problem on defense because he can't guard anybody. But on offense, no one will be able to guard him. If you get the ball down low, that's it. Right? And you're telling me that it's impossible that it, you can't in some parallel dimension, in some faraway dimension, in the multi-dimension plex that we live in here, that Zach Eady can't be an effective NBA player and get 20 points and 15 rebounds a game and play the old school style and see it, just see what would happen. Right? A team, here's my argument. Like a team that sucks right now playing like everyone else because there's one style of the NBA, why not try something a little different? See how it works. If you suck, so what? You already blow. Who cares? All right, now, next stop. We go to Raleigh, a hotbed of college and basketball where the big man, D.J. Burns. You know, this guy's only been at NC State for one year. He's played at two other schools. He's in Tennessee. He played at Winthrop, I believe. Now he's obviously at NC State. But D.J. Burns, the darling of uh, the events recently in the tournament, 11 seed NC State. And is it true that the pro football world is sniffing around DJ Burns and not his body odor. Uh, apparently so. Say what? Uh, yeah, that's the the buzz here. I don't believe this was an April Fool's joke. Multiple NFL executives viewing DJ Burns uh, as a possible possible NFL offensive line offensive line candidate. Uh, and while it is unknown whether or not Burns would have wanted to even bother playing football, a sport as far as we know he hasn't played, maybe in high school. Uh, he would reportedly get a big turnout if he participated in a pro day after the Final Four. So where are you at, that's the question, where are you at on the NFL having legit interest in NC State big man uh, DJ Burns? So the way I approach this, it is a novelty act, but I buy it. I buy it as a novelty act. Now, if you're going to sit here and tell me that Burns, which I don't even think he's eligible for the draft, but if he was, would be drafted anywhere more than a seventh-round pick, I'd say you're nutso. But as a novelty act, I buy it. I get it. It makes sense as a novelty act. The NFL has a rich history of taking people that have no football pedigree and turning them into football players. They've tried it over the years, different generations, when it was a mom-and-pop business with track and field athletes from the Olympics that have been given NFL opportunities. The most famous, most successful player who didn't play college football was Antonio Gates. But we've seen players that have become linebackers. Uh, We've seen... Uh, we've seen defensive linemen, we've seen receivers. We, I, To my knowledge, maybe I missed it. I'm not perfect. I don't recall an offensive tackle that did not play college football becoming an effective player or even getting an opportunity in the NFL without playing uh, in, the, in the NFL. And there have been guys on defense that have had the opportunity but not on offensive tackle. And the key, though, and the reason I think as a novelty act this would work, it's all about the footwork. And, you know, it's all it's all about that. You know, they call me Benny Ballerina back in the day. And this guy's like a ballerina uh, with his footwork. And uh, don't shake your head, Eddie. Uh, this guy's like a uh, ballerina. Right? He got, he's got the power of an elephant. And uh, he's got the toes of a ballerina. 
That's what you need as an offensive lineman. He's got that. So as a undrafted free agent, if he wanted to do it, if nobody in the NBA wants him, he could become a pet project. But my, my basketball people tell me they think DJ Burns has a future in the NBA and that people look at Nikola Jokic and they're like, well, he was a fatty when he came into the NBA. They The Nuggets spent time. They worked with him. They got him in shape. They knew the skill. And he has become a Hall of Fame player. Why couldn't DJ Burns lose a few pounds and become that player and get him in condition? But an NFL team, put him on the practice squad. I can see that. Take a shot in the dark with DJ Burns. Why not? All right, last word. Next stop, we're going to go quickly here. By request, I was not planning on talking about this, but we are the show by the people, for the people plausibly all about the people and a couple of our listeners in Kentucky said hey did you see this and my response is of course not why would I see that uh, it's about Louisville and the details are out we read the payout agreement between former head basketball coach Kenny Payne and Louisville now if you didn't see this you probably didn't I didn't see it Kenny Payne will be getting 7.25 million dollars paid out in monthly installments of over 200000 per month through March, end of March, 2027. Let me, let me rephrase that for those of you a little slow. Uh, he's going to get 200000 every month until March 31st, 2027. So the question, what do you make of Louisville paying its former coach, Kenny Payne, that kind of chicken scratch for – that amount of time. So the, the first answer is the obvious answer. It's insanity. Like, that's the first thing here. And the other thing is that Kenny Payne should be brought up on grand larceny charges considering the job that he did coaching the one-storied Louisville Cardinal basketball program and running it right into the ground, right? Now, he'll argue, well, it was Rick Patino and the problems they had before. It wasn't my fault, his fault. That guy over there, I blame him. The bottom line, it's a result-based business, a result-based business, and Kenny Payne was an abject failure any way you slice it. He had a 188 winning percentage. That's it. The guy coached 64 games. They won 12 of them. In conference play, they were 5-35 and 35 in conference play. All right, so we need to redo that outlaw country song, that old country song, Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. And we need to change it. Right? Instead, it's mamas let your babies grow up to be bad college basketball coaches and get the the forever money. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. 